Yeah, what's going on, Kendall? Congrats, man. Um, with the opportunity here with the Titans, why why was it the right fit for you? So I literally got that question a second ago. Um, we'll, we'll flash back to Cleveland, man, just running the ball the way we did and the things that we could do there. Uh, it, it's top notch. And then when the opportunity arose and came here, I mean, literally I had Nick Chubb as a running back in Cleveland. If you want to argue it, one of the only people in this league that may be better is, as you guys call him, King Henry. So the fact that I would have, you know, had the opportunity to block for a man like that, someone who's so top notch. And then at the same time, you know, I know Coach Vrabel from, from Houston when I played there my first four years, top notch guy. I, I know Ben Jones. I played against the Titans for years now and, and just know the type of organization and the type of team that's always been here. So the fact that I could come in here and, you know, try to help and do the best that I can. I mean, I couldn't blink at it, man. It is a beautiful spot. And not to throw into, I'm literally from Charlotte, North Carolina. I went to school at App State. This is not far from home. So to have my family closer to, couldn't pass it up. Luke? Hey, Kendall, are you aware yet of, of what your role is going to be in terms of, are you going to be a starter competing for a starting job? Your guess is as good as mine, my friend. You know, really and truly, I personally don't necessarily not to say worry about it because, of course, you want to know. But at the same time, bro, I just bring what I bring to the table and I let the chips fall as they may. Uh, I know there's a lot of things and, you know, the roles will be defined when the time comes. But I always take the approach. I mean, I'm just going to try to learn this playbook, learn the guys that I'm around, you know, block for the people that I'm blocking for and just do what I can. And however that plays out, it's going to play out. <laughs> And Kendall, you kind of touched on it there, but what you've blocked for some good backs in Cleveland. Now you got Derrick Henry going to be lining up behind you. What do, what have you thought about him from afar, and how much you looking forward to being his teammate? Oh man, I'll put it to you like this. I and this is a true story. I remember warming up in Houston and going out there, and Bernardrick McKinney was our middle linebacker at the time. He came in with my class. And I remember watching Derrick Henry in the far end zone warm up for the Titans before the game, before we all were stretching the whole team come out there. And I remember telling myself, he is literally Bernardrick McKinney's size at running back. And then to watch him be able to do the things he does and to hear Ben Jones and other guys talk about how such of a wonderful person he is at the same time, I mean, that's what you want. I mean, we literally play offensive line to open holes for a man like that. And to know that I'm going to be and have the opportunity to block or possibly one of the best runners ever, it's going to be so exciting, man. John Glennon. Hey, Kendall. Yeah, just going back to, um, you know, when, when you signed, did you have uh, any indication that, you know, the Titans were actually going to release Dennis, uh, you know, in another day or two? And, and, you know, what was your reaction when that happened? And, you know, possibly, as you say, maybe opened up that starting role. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I, Dennis's brother, Tim, is the offensive coordinator in Houston, and he worked with us very closely when I was there, offensive line-wise, my first few years. So I've known Tim Kelly for a long time. I've had the pleasure of, you know, meeting Dennis and, and forming a friendship with Dennis. I had no idea. You know, I literally and truly no idea whatsoever. Dennis was literally one of the first people I was very excited to get here and to get around, you know, especially on top of Ben Jones and everyone else. So when that happened, man, like, it literally – I had no idea, but at the same time, the only thing that I really and truly can control is what I do each and every day. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's that's all I can handle. Thanks. Paul? Hey, Kendall. Um, talk us through your, your uh, prowess as a, as a pass blocker since we've been talking all around so far here. Yeah, so, you know, early on, I got thrown into the fire early in Houston going against JJ and Clowney every single day. And when you're down there in that Texas heat in those long training camp days, it's put up or shut up. So, I mean, I've had to rise to the occasion blocking guys like that for a long time. And then we flash forward to Cleveland. And I mean, they have Miles Garrett, Olivier Vernon outside on those edges. So it's not like I haven't been going against people in practice every single day who are literally top notch at their craft. And then at the same time, everybody always touch bases on, you know, you got thrown into the playoff game against TJ, which we all know TJ is a phenomenal pass rusher. I mean, I always looked at pass rushing and pass blocking as, you know, we're doing a dance. 
you know, I'm literally trying to be as smooth as possible and dictate to you what I want you to do. And that's what they do to us as well. I mean, it's something that I take a lot of pride in because, I mean, we're bigger men on that field, but I love showing people that we're as athletic and we can go against some of the best athletes on the team. You know, that's something I take a lot of pride in. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be very, very fun. And it's something, like I said, I look forward to doing. Corey Curtis. Hey, I'll get you back on the running game here. You know, there are other teams with other good running backs, but this one is committed to running the ball more than throwing the ball. As an offensive lineman, how attractive is that to you to be moving forward more than 50% of the time? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, literally, if you know football, if you study football, especially in this league, this league has changed to passing the ball, which everyone understands. I mean, it's a quarterback-driven league. So to be on a team that really and truly, and of course in Cleveland, we ran the ball big time too, but to continue that and do it more here, I mean, that's an offensive lineman's dream to be able, now don't get me wrong, we enjoy pass blocking as well, but I'm pretty sure you can ask any one of my fellow offensive linemen in the league to pass set 60 or 70 times in a game or 50 plus, like, eh, hey, that's not the greatest. I mean, but at the same time, just knowing that you're going to ground and pound like we're going to do here, I mean, it's a dream come true. It is. Dave Beauclair. Kendall, along those lines, when when you see your line and your running back start to wear down a defense, like like when do you know that's happening and how satisfying is that when you see it taking place? Oh, you can feel it early. Um, don't get me wrong. Everybody's going to have more juice. Everybody's going to, you know, sit here and come with their best shot early. But at the same time, you can already understand if you're establishing drives, if it's second down and seven, you get that first first down, if it's you know, third and five, third and six, and we choose to run the ball and you get that first down, you can already begin to start to see defenses demoralized, legit. I mean, anybody who plays the game will tell you that. And then, of course, as you lean and wear it on these people, you just can tell. Like, you can look in defenders' eyes and you can feel when the defense knows that they can't stop the run and they can't stop what you guys are doing. You know, I had a phenomenal coach in Cleveland, Coach Callahan, and he literally taught us, man, we are literally going to run, get off the ball, cut, get these guys open to literally run through these holes. And that's all I've known, and it's going to be very exciting to do it here. Teron? I would imagine there's a big man who caught a touchdown knowing the Titans do that. That's something that, that attracted you to the team. But uh, now, real talk, though, with the zone scheme and, and just how some of those things work, you guys in Cleveland had excellent timing with, with Hunt and, and Chubb. How did you develop that, and how would you look at being able to develop that same type of timing here with, with the Titans and Derrick Henry? So it's always going to come down to, you know, repetitive reps over and over and over. You know, it's really and truly us learning our back and our back learning an offensive line. You know, every year things change, people change, pieces change. But it's really putting that time in um, and knowing, like, in Cleveland, I knew how – Kareem was going to run the ball when he came into the game. I knew how Nick Chubb was going to run the ball when he came into the game because I had spent that time and we had built those things in through practice repetitions. I already knew. Like, I knew if I cut that backside three technique, Chubb was going to cut it back and be gone. Like, I knew that was going to happen. So in the back of my mind, I mean, of course, you always want to get it. But I knew literally making that block could change our entire game. And that that comes through practice reps. So, I mean, the time's going to come. And, and I can't wait to get out there and me show them what I can do. Jim Wyatt. And Kendall, the, the Titans number two back is an App State guy like yourself. How much did you keep up with Darrington Evans? And, and what do you think about being teammates with him? I mean, it's always beautiful to see him. You can see it. You can see it right here. I, I, I wear it with pride. Always. It's always on me. If you want to see the shirt up underneath, there, there's an App State shirt right there as well. You know, we play tonight in, in, in March Madness. It's a big time for our college. And I, of course, when I left that, um, Darrington came in and he had a phenomenal career. He's a very explosive player. Uh, but I always want to see guys from my school do well. I love my school dearly. But to have someone here who I can lean on, who's been through the program that I've been through, that's part of that family, man. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I've been blessed with almost every team I've been on. I've had someone from my high school or someone from my college be on those teams. So to continue that here, I mean, it's truly a blessing. Has your opinion on who the top running back in the league changed in the last uh, week? I mean, if somebody would have asked you last week and now somebody asked you now, has it changed? Oh, uh, I mean, let, let's let's be completely honest here. Um, you can't go wrong with either or. 
you you can. I mean, Derrick Henry is the king. I get it. But Nick Chubb <laughs> and Kareem are phenomenal. Um, at the same time, though, I know the stats speak for itself. Um, so so we'll just leave it at that. John Glennon. Yeah, Kendall. Uh, I know Teron uh, mentioned the uh, the touchdown uh, earlier. What what do you recall from uh, scoring that TD against the the Titans uh, last year? And and I guess uh, I imagine you're probably aware that a couple of your new teammate uh, linemen have have done the same. We guys have a little little fraternity of uh, pass catching O linemen, TD pass catching O linemen. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I'll never forget it. You know, it's a moment that. As a bigger dude growing up in general, uh, you dream about that. You know, we block for men every day. Uh, we, we try to make sure that the receivers and everything make their job easier so they can get that glory. So, you know, the fact that I was able to do that, I mean, it's a feeling that I can't even describe to you. You know, everyone always asks me, did, did you expect to catch the ball? Of course. I mean, I caught a pass my first year in Houston. Uh, I caught a pass now in Cleveland. So, I mean, every team that I've been on, I've caught. Uh, I had an opportunity to catch a pass. This pass year just happened to be a touchdown. I still have the ball. It literally has a picture on it from when I caught it. It'll be one of my fondest memories ever. Um, and, and if I get one here, I mean, we'll keep the trend alive. Thank you. Last question for you, Paul. Wondering uh, if you've talked with Jack Conklin at all about uh, Tennessee you know, leading up to this or, uh, or, or in general. Yeah, yes, sir. So, um, I had met Jack, of course, when I was still in Houston because Ben was with me my first year in Houston and then came here. So meeting Jack and, you know, meeting him when he first came out of Michigan State, very, very nice guy. And then for Jack to come over to Cleveland last year, I mean, I literally have nothing negative to say about that man. From the way he lives his life to how he approaches the game to the person he is, that man is top notch. And we had plenty of talks about, you know, his time in Tennessee in general. And I mean, he's told me all about this place and he always had nothing but positive to say about here. So to, for it to come full circle now, then for me to be here, you know, he he's filled me in on almost anything that I could ask. I mean, I could literally get on the phone and call Jack right now. And I know he'd answer and he'd always be there for me. So just to have someone like that who had such success here and the type of player that he is to be now one of my brothers, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling.